Uncharted Drake's Fortune is a game that tells the story of Nathan Drake, a treasure hunter who claims to be a descendant of famous explorer Sir Francis Drake. Throughout the game, various story elements are brought up that relate to moments in history, some true, some false. The aim of this case study is to examine these facets and decide which are real, which are not, and what may at least be plausible. To start off, I'm going to look at the opening quotation which attributed to Sir Francis Drake. The quote reads, There must be a beginning of any great matter, but a continuing unto the end until it be thoroughly finished yields the true glory. This quote is real, and it's from a letter that Drake sent to Sir Francis Walsingham from Cape Sagres, Portugal on 17th of May 1587. One of the key character descriptions of Nathan Drake is his claim that he is a descendant of Sir Francis Drake. It is quickly pointed out that Drake did not have any children, which is true. So for Nathan to be a descendant would mean that Drake would have had to have had an extramarital relationship. This of course is entirely possible, but although it cannot now be proven one way or the other, I would like to look at a few facts we do know. Drake was around at a time when religion and religious values were of great importance to the people of England. In particular, whether England was to be a Catholic or Protestant country was a point of contention. Furthermore, Drake was brought up in a religious family, as his father was a preacher. Drake himself followed a Protestant faith and would even lead religious services on his journeys. This would suggest that it is unlikely Drake had any relations outside of marriage. However, a look at Drake's other exploits reveals that he sold slave ships and even sold slaves, working with his cousin John Hawkins. He was also involved with attacks on various towns and villages and seizing Spanish ships and treasure. The law at the time allowed for this. Basic human rights did not extend to slaves, criminals or non-Protestants. Also worth noting that it was not uncommon for slaves to be sexually abused. Again, none of this counts as proof one way or the other. However, for the sake of offering an opinion, I'd say the probability of Drake fathering a secret child was fairly high. But the plausibility of that child knowing they were a relative of Drake and then telling their children, who told their children, who told their children, until Nathan Drake came along? I think that is very unlikely. I think any children Drake may have had would almost certainly not know who their father was. Part of the game's story involves a revelation that Drake faked his own death. It is brought up that the coffin that he was buried at sea in is actually empty. Also, a ring that Drake had with the inscription Sic Parvis Magna on it was dated 29th January 1596, one day after Drake's death. Drake was known by the Spanish as El Drake, the dragon. This was due to his many successful attacks on them and seizing many of their ships and treasure. However, even up to his death in 1596, his attack against the Spanish Armada was not going in his favour. Considering Drake's history with the Armada, it would be perfectly understandable that he would not want to be taken prisoner by them. This provides a motive for wanting to fake his own death. Though he also needs to consider that leading up to his death, it was reported that Drake was suffering from dysentery meaning he would not have had to take his own death. I think that it is actually very plausible that Drake may have faked his death. Perhaps even the whole suffering from dysentery was a lie. I say this because reports of what happened state that Drake requested to be dressed in full armour. He was then placed in a lead coffin, or some references say lead lined coffin, and buried at sea off the coast of Panama. Also, two ships, Elizabeth and Delight, were scuttled nearby the sea burial. In October 2011, an expedition led by explorer Pat Grosse set out to find the remains of Sir Francis Drake. They found Elizabeth, they found the light, but they did not find the coffin. As it was a lead, or lead lined coffin, it does not seem likely it could have floated around all too much. Maybe it was never there. The legend of El Dorado came from the Muisca people who held a religious ceremony by Lake Guatavita. This is situated near what we now call Bogota in Colombia. 
The tradition when naming a new chief was to cover the man in gold dust and then he would dive into the lake as an offering to the gods. When the Spanish conquerors took control of the Musca people, they began to hear stories of El Dorado, and although the Musca did have a lot of gold, it was obtained through trade and thus no golden city was found. It is believed by some that the stories that the captives told the Spanish were greatly exaggerated deliberately to send them on a search for nothing, driving them mad and even to death in the process. In the game, it is stated that El Dorado was actually a statue and not a city. If indeed El Dorado exists, this would be more plausible. Since the Marusca were covering men in gold, it will not be too far a stretch to believe they had large statues of gold. But as far as the gold being cursed and turning the Spanish into demon-like creatures, it is easy to write that off as something made up for entertainment purposes. But consider that the Marusca people were making offerings to their gods, and that they lied to the Spanish, meaning that on some level they were trying to prevent them from taking it. It would then not be too hard to believe that they may have also placed curses on their most prized treasures for foreigners trying to take it away. Assuming these curses were real, that could have been what drove them to insanity and take on demon form. However, the taking on demon form part does seem too much of a stretch on reality. Plus, how would they have survived so long without a consistent food supply? The problem is that until this day, there is still no proof that Elder Royal ever really existed. Though conversely, there is no proof that it did not. So a person can choose to believe one or the other. For the sake of picking a side, I would say that it did exist, but not in a way that the legend suggests, or even in the way depicted in Drake's Fortune. The word El Dorado roughly translates as the Golden One. Since it is known that the Musca people covered their new leaders in gold, for that period of time he would have been the Golden One, thus the existence of El Dorado.